Magicians have been using the terms smoke, vapor, and mist interchangeably when marketing their magic utility devices that in essence produce an aerosol. An aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas. Aerosols can be natural or anthropogenic. Examples of natural aerosols are fog or mist, and examples of anthropogenic aerosols include smoke, steam from a kettle, sprayed pesticides, etc. So while smoke is an aerosol, not all aerosols are smoke. Consumers typically use the term vapor to refer to aerosols generated from heated tobacco products as a result result of combustion. If it's not a natural aerosol, it's not good for you, whether you're a magician or not. As a magician, I do not smoke. I do not encourage you to smoke or vape, but I do use smoke to enhance my magic. In this video, I will explore this topic further and with releases such as Mist Watch, producing smoke has become a bit safer and more practical. For years, smoke effects have been used to enhance magic, starting with the most popular, cigarettes. The magician that has done the most with smoke was Tom Mullica. Born in Wisconsin on August 19, 1948, he was a comedy magician and impressionist who performed on television specials and appeared on television many times, including Late Night with David Letterman, World's Greatest Magic, Viva Variety and Penn & Teller's Sin City. Unfortunately, we've never got a chance to meet in person, but I got to learn from his magic with his release called Expert Cigarette Magic Made Easy. It's a three volume download you can get via Penguin Magic. It's in that project that he shares that his material is extremely dangerous and should not be attempted. One comedian he references as inspiration for his smoking thumb effect is Stan Lauren, an English comic actor from 1890s. So quite a while back. Remember warning by Daniel Garcia that has now been discontinued because it's dangerous to inhale sulfur? I did it so you don't have to. Trust me, it's not pleasant experience. And Tom Malika teaches it as pantomime cigarette number two and also does not recommend you try it. What I learned from Tom's project as a non-smoker who will definitely not be tonguing cigarettes anytime soon is his beautiful handling and presence as he manipulates a variety of objects, including cards. I loved his card a cigarette routine. It's so simple. So another highlight for me from the project is cigarette behind the ear. In many ways, when we vanish an object, it's nice to bring it back. In the cigarette vanish, that's what happens. There's a fun moment, the reveal, and uh, you combine the concept of misdirection here as well. As I don't use cigarettes in my act, I'm applying this theory to a Sharpie marker and combining it with the mist watch to produce the smoke and utilizing also from time to time the vanishing Sharpie. I love it in a routine or as a standalone effect. Speaking of Sharpie markers, Alan Rorison's effect smoke was my favorite way to produce smoke. At the time, I thought it was indeed harmless as it was referred to as vapor and no nicotine used. No nicotine means no addiction to nicotine. However, this anthropogenic aerosol will also contain ultrafine particles that can be inhaled deep into the lungs of volatile organic compounds and potentially heavy metals. What's sad about these cigarettes is that for the first few years and even today, kids think it's safe. Any unnatural aerosol is going to be bad for you. Perhaps actually it is the reason it's not restocked for a while now and it's so out on Theory 11 and I'm unable to purchase refills. It was, how, however, like I mentioned, very convenient way to produce smoke from your mouth. Inhaling this type of aerosol, again, is dangerous. But what if it's a device that you don't directly inhale? What if the liquid combusts on your wrists or another device concealed on your body? I've produced smoke coming from a button from a shirt for a TV appearance in the UK. I've tested almost every device out there. You know it through my reviews. They were often bulky, difficult to conceal, and over time break. They get discontinued or in rare cases still available to repurchase, but at full price. The best way I can describe it using this device is still exposure to smoke. The same way a campfire will produce smoke that is bad for you, campfire actually may be even more harmful, but you're exposed to it far less, for far less time than most of the people who suffer health damages from exposure to smoke or secondhand smoke. With that said, I recommend devices that you do not inhale because you don't have to produce smoke 
15 to 30 times per day. In fact, you can limit your exposure to smoke with one-time use per performance. A simple drop of glycerin into the mist watch will allow you to produce three to five beautiful clouds of smoke before it will require a refill. Although I do carry the little refill vial with me in my pocket when I perform. I also don't perform every day. I was traveling not too long ago with this device and it also passed through several airports in my carry-on, which is a really good thing because I hate checking in my luggage. When used in moderation, which is also good for the longevity of your heating coil, it is a powerful device in magic. You may argue this specific item this watch is still a little bit bulky on my wrist, but keep in mind I have very tiny wrists. People, when I perform, actually noticed the watch, complimented it, but never suspected it. And that's very important. Don't run if you're not chased. It's probably the safest way today and most practical way to produce smoke. Hansen Gin Production Company is a company to watch, no pun intended here. I'm rarely disappointed. And if you're interested in getting this watch, I think it's worth it. I hope there's still quantities available when you watch this video. To close the chapter on smoke, I need to talk about Mist by Henry White, released via Illusionist. You are producing smoke visibly out of empty hands and you don't have to do a massive science experiment where you scrape red phosphorus from a matchbox, light it on fire and then rub that toxic stuff between your fingers to create the illusion that smoke is coming out of your fingertips. Now again, I did the experiment so you don't have to. Please don't do this at home. Back to MIST project, Henry shared the idea with Tom Malika and actually many other colleagues, and it was quite unique. I am glad he shared the method. And personally, I was really close to discover it myself. It's very neat without giving anything away. I recommend you explore the method. It's a fairly accessible download and you will enjoy performing it on video, only on video. I think, in my opinion. Okay, so as part of the prep, you will have to inhale smoke when he explains it, whichever smoke, e-cigarette or cigarettes. So same risks as I described earlier apply. As a non-smoker and someone who does not perform every day, I can take the risk to try it now and then. I still use smoke by Alan Roberson now and then. I also eat cards from time to time when I do regeneration. In one of my rope tricks, I'm often left with bruises on my wrists. Sometimes we take risks in magic. Back to Tom Malika's intro, he had shared that he actually stopped smoking for 13 years and only used cigarettes when performing his act. If you made it at the end of this video, subscribe for more and like this video because it makes my son think I'm a YouTuber and YouTubers are cool. I'll see you in the next one.